Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or are someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed last week's episode, be sure to tune in after you tune in today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share an entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. This episode will be Ariana Huffington. As a kid in Greece, she always wanted to go to Cambridge University. She dreamed of being a writer, but only had a ton of rejection letters with a little money to go with it. Her mother borrowed some money to go to England to make her daughter's dream come true. She stayed persistent and published about a dozen books. As a true entrepreneur, she set her goals high. She moved from London to New York in 1980, but after a divorce in 1997, she moved to California and ran for governor in 2003. After the 2004 presidential election, she had a meeting to talk about the role that the media played in the election. This is where she met soon-to-be co-founder Ken Lehrer. They shared their ideas to create a combination of a collective blog along with a 24-7 news source. She now has a notable blogging website with an editorial staff of over 50 people from a company you may have heard of in the Huffington Post. Mandela, have you heard of her story before? Yeah. Yeah? Phenomenal. Well, that, that voice you just heard is the sound of my first guest. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, share your story, and what you're working on today. My name is Mandela van Eden, and I'm an international adventure guide and producer of The Trail Less Traveled, which is an adventure radio series and podcast dedicated to collecting stories and sounds from the most remote locations around the world. And uh, I got into interviewing people when I was about 14 years old. Wow. It was in China. I was traveling with my mother on the Yangtze Yangtze River when they were relocating people and taking down villages and bridges in order to flood the Three Gorges for the Three Gorges Dam. And I interviewed people about how it felt to be relocated after their family had been living on the banks of the Yangtze Yangtze for, you know, upwards of 3,000, 5,000 years. And I realized quickly that I didn't like the camera in between myself (laughs) and the person it didn't really capture this idea of storytelling and taking the listener there using sound. So um, I started to uh, interview people on live radio at age 18 and did that for about five years. And then for the past 10 years, I've been hosting a adventure radio series that comes out weekly on FM radio. And uh, it's also a podcast these days. But the way that I supplement my podcast and basically my dream of collecting these stories and sounds from around the world in order to inspire inspire and inform the listener. Um, I fund that by guiding uh, full-time in the Grand Canyon. So I'm a paddle boat captain, and I row boats down the Grand Canyon for about 15 days, 226 river miles. And when I'm not in the Grand Canyon, I travel to Africa or New Zealand. Amazing. Australia, where the rivers are flowing or where the people are telling their stories. And uh, most recently, I was guiding in Morocco this spring and the Ahansal River, which slices through the Middle Atlas Mountains of Morocco, and uh, documenting the stories of the nomadic tribes, the Tuareg, Berber, and Bedouin men who were living in Sahara, about how they were using celestial navigation. So I like guiding in these countries where I am recording because it helps me to really articulate questions that are relevant to that person. Well, that's because an... as a guide, you know, you have to talk about everything from the plate tectonics up to the biodiversity on the surface level. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what I do. Well, absolutely. That's a great intro. Thank you for that. I'm really excited to get into more detail as we go over the questions. But now, next what I do is the big five. Each episode, my guests and I go over these five questions to help them really learn what it's like to learn an entrepreneur. When did you realize that you weren't happy with what you were doing or that you just needed a change? Uh, never really, my friend. I've always kind of loved what I do, um, as, as corny as that sounds. But when I was 17 years old, I found out you could get paid to guide whitewater. 
and I was in the school which I completed with a degree in media arts and international marketing and a language background. Um, I wanted to work in China, but after doing these interviews in China, I realized that I didn't necessarily want to work there, but I really enjoyed gathering knowledge of other cultures and sharing it with people. So, um, yeah, then I got into radio and I've not done anything that didn't feel, that felt like work. You know, it's, it's all been really of quite a passion for me, all the things I do. And, the, and that includes river guiding full time. That includes meeting a weekly radio deadline and that includes teaching yoga full time. So none of those things pay very well, yeah. but none of them feel like work. Uh, that's a great answer. That's exactly what I was looking for. What would you say one or two of the more difficult parts of being an entrepreneur are? <sighs> Supporting yourself, you know, you're not going to, for me, I'm often in the field, uh, you know, off the grid in third world countries. Um, and living, I've been living out of a suitcase for four, for 12 years. And, um, you know, I do have many, many listeners here in Missoula, they say upwards of 100,000 when the show premieres on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. But I'm not around those people, so I'm not always hearing feedback that really recharges my batteries of motivation that, like, people are listening and um, the work is um, being appreciated. So it, I come back to Missoula, my base camp here in the mountains, and uh, it, it's a time of rest for my body from guiding and also to hear feedback from the community and to invest in this community. So I say the hardest part for me is just being my own biggest supporter and encourager, not getting down on whatever, because uh, traveling nonstop and recording and meeting deadlines is a challenging thing. But people out there are listening. You just might not be near them all the time, if that makes sense, you know? Great answer, great answer. What would you say one of your greatest failures is, and what did it teach you? one of my biggest failures was not being mindful of my knees at an earlier age. Yeah. I don't know what I would have necessarily changed, but sorry, I've got a dog here who's got a bone he's protecting. Mm. Um, I've had four knee surgeries, and I am also a an international adventure guide. So I have to hike and I have to jump and I have to rescue people and all this stuff. And my knees have gone out on me and um, non ideal situations. And so I cannot trust my knees, but still I do what I do. I just kind of uh, wish I would have been a little bit more mindful of physical therapy and that truly we have this one vehicle in this lifetime, you know, and uh, I'm kind of waiting now for technology to improve and to eventually get a, knee replacement one day. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but it probably will. Um, so I know yeah. it's not a business answer, but in terms of my business, which involves being outside and um, adventuring and saving people sometimes, I uh, could have been more mindful about my own body, my vehicle, and not taking so many risks and hurting myself at a younger age. Absolutely. Lessons learned always. Lessons learned. If you could choose to have a conversation with any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who would it be and what are you talking about? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, well, some of the first people that came into my mind were the early explorers who, like Sir Francis Drake, sailing around the world hanging out in Antarctica, climbing mountains. And these adventurers who were really getting out there and exploring um, <clears throat> before we had the technology that we have today, you know, wearing heavy wool and sometimes eating food for months on end out of the can. So I'd say the person that I would interview would probably be an interview, not interview or just hang out with and talk with. Hang out with, talk with, interview, either or. Whatever you'd like to do. Okay, 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 okay. Let's just let's just say the person that that would be would most certainly be Stanley or Livingston in Africa, the earlier explorers who were uh, 
going through the extremes. And I know that that's not entrepreneurship and business, but I'm not talking about the people like Columbus and, um, you know, some of the uh, pirates, I guess, which Sir Francis Drake could have been considered a pirate. But like going out in search of cultures and not necessarily in search of gold, those kind of entrepreneurs, those early ones, hundreds of years ago. That's a great answer. It's definitely answer. unique. Okay. It's definitely unique. Cool, cool. Where do you see yourself in your entrepreneurial endeavors in the future here? Let's look at one year and five years. And one year from today, what do you hope to be doing with yourself? Well, The Trail Less Traveled is an adventure radio series and podcast. Uh, you can check out more at traillesstraveled.net. But there's about 375 episodes that have aired over the past 10 years. And most recently, it's been recognized as top Advent, top, top, top travel podcast by the UK's Daily Telegraph. So that's a huge one, and I hope that that exposure gets more subscribers and, and more feedback for the show and just growing awareness of it because once more awareness grows for the podcast, as I'm sure you're, you know, um, you have a bigger audience. And for me, that there's a message out there that each of the guests has to share. You know, we have so much to learn from these cultures all over the world. Medicine men and storytellers and uh, and just sometimes people who have been sitting on the ground on the beach watching hotels get built around them cutting coconuts for 35 years. We have things to learn from these people. And so one of my goals is for there to be a bigger audience for these people's stories. Because I walk away from every single interview and story in the field completely inspired. And I hope that uh, from one year from now, from five years from now, there'll be uh, more awareness of the trail less traveled and just more opportunity to share these stories of others. That's a great answer. Thank you so much for coming on today. You know, this is an international story, my first in this new show. This is season one of my show and having someone with ties in Africa and all around the world, I know it's a lot of value You're going to be added to our listeners. I really enjoyed your whole journey and how you followed your dreams from a young age at 14 years old. But it's the time for the last word here. Is there something you'd like to share with our listeners that you did not have a chance to touch on yet? Yes. I think that one day uh, you should follow your dreams. And, you know, I often hear people say, I know, oh, I've been meaning to do that. Oh, I need, oh, I've been meaning to go to yoga. Or, oh, I, you know, I've always wanted to go to Cuba, whatever it is. Yes, it's a seed that you plant, but like you, you could, you just, the first step you make towards that is a huge one, is a massive one, even if it's just researching the plane tickets. Um, so I'd say, you know, create the life you want to live. And it's, it's going to be hard, especially chasing your dreams. You might um, have to take a risk and leave uh, a very high paying job, like some of the people that I have interviewed. But Absolutely. your level of happiness will increase when you do something you love and is you're passionate about. So whatever it is that you're passionate about, do it. If it's art, if it's travel, if it's talking to people, whatever it is, do that. That's what I would. Uh, that's what I would encourage people to do. Thanks for the great advice. Can you share your social media or your website, any ways for our listeners to to follow your journeys, listen to your podcast? Yeah, the podcast is. The Trail Less Traveled, and it's available on all podcast platforms. The website is absolutely groovy. I hope you guys check it out. There's pictures and video from whitewater expeditions, be it dropping massive rapids with a GoPro hooked up on the back of the boat or interviewing people in the uh, outback in Australia. The website is traillesstraveled.net. And, uh, yeah, you subscribe, contact me. I love hearing from folks. If you, if actually, to be honest with you, if you... Um, are feeling inspired and you think of someone that you would like to interview, a new project I'm working on is uh, having people interview storytellers that inspire them to in invoke more global community between podcasting and cultures around the world. So yeah, just contact me. My name's Mandela, traillesstravel.net. Cheers. Thank you so much, Mandela, for joining us again today. And everybody listening, you can follow the show on Instagram at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at Podcast by Lancey. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube, and my website is vincentalancy.com. Make sure you check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, on Amazon now. DM me or email me. Let me know what you think of it. If you enjoyed today's episode with our international Mandela, 
please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work really hard to find unique value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I'll follow the end of the show and the last word with a quote that inspired me and I know it will for you too. In a gentle way, you can shake the world. Thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur.